five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex, it's the Ramble, we're going until midnight, tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. I changed my name to Larry Lockdown Brown now. Yeah, right, exactly. Now let me let me explain. When we do these, we usually do two of them, okay? So one goes one week, and then the next one goes the next week. But we're doing these both on the same day, which is only a couple of weeks after we've been under lockdown, okay? So I we have to pretend like this is a week later. <laughs> And I guess nothing will have changed in that week. Nothing is going to change. We're going to be locked down for a month at least. Yeah, yeah. And they, they, they say California hasn't gotten the worst of it yet. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess you guys are going through the worst of it, I think, now. And we'll probably hit it. I think we're going to hit it in two weeks. Well, as our lovely uh, governor, Mario Cuomo, who has been acting absolutely admirably in all and I was never a big fan of, of uh, Andrew Cuomo, uh, but uh, he just was terrific. He's been terrific. He just says we're the canary in the coal mine, you know. And what's happening to us now is going to happen all over the United States. Even if some, now it's it's not going to happen. I don't think on the same level, okay, because. The problem was, uh, when we talk about being on the same level, um, we have a density prob problem here in New York City where we, we're just so on top of each other that if you go out saying, hey, I'm not going to get anything, uh, you know, I'm afraid to go out personally, you know, because I don't well, know. Uh, what were you going to say? You're, you're afraid to go out? I'm afraid to go out. You know, wow. um, um, because I had that, you know, prostate seed thing, and I don't know how much that compromises my health. I don't think Gosh, it does. Yeah. I don't think it really does, because it's not like a lot of other things. Uh, you know, they say if you have cancer, you're, you know, you're, you're, your immune system is down and so on and so forth. But I don't have that kind of cancer. You know what I'm saying? So... And I can't. I, 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 I'm not getting a hold of my doctor to say what is what are what's my culpability in all of this, you know. Um, so um, I, I, I probably should try and call him or write him and just say, you know, what's my uh, what's my immune system like under this whole thing? But uh, he's over at Mount Sinai Hospital, and I, you know, I can't even go over to see him. I, I, I was supposed to have some some kind of uh, CT scan, and I haven't even heard from the hospital at all. I, they, they just don't care about me at this point. I think they've stopped all procedures. Well, here, here was the thing, I, I, and I've, told, I've said this on the air before, but I haven't told you, was that uh, you know, I had to go get these seeds implanted to kill the prostate cancer, all right? So I had that a couple of weeks ago. If I had waited a couple of more weeks... I wouldn't be able to get it. They wouldn't do it, no. Which would be kind of maybe be handing me a death sentence. I don't know if that would be the case. It's a slow-growing prostate, a slow-growing cancer, but nevertheless. So I, I talked to the nurse, his nurse, because she called me about something to say, well, they'll be getting a hold of you about the CT scan, but I haven't heard from them. Um, and... I said to her, I guess I dodged a bullet, huh? She says, well, we could have done the operation, you know. And I said, oh, uh, really? Even under these conditions? She said, yeah, there are operating rooms available, and we could, we could do the operation. She said, but the radioactive seeds are no longer available. What? Wow. <laughs> you know, 
She says, that's where you dodge the bullet, you know. So I feel very fortunate, you know. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so uh, all, all, all the ag agony of going through the operation and so on, it was worth it because we did it on time. So that's, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You know. Well, how many people are dying back there a day? You know, we've had over a thousand deaths here in New York City or in New York State, excuse me, New York State. But the majority of them are in the city. And you know, we uh -huh. had five MTA employees die. We're recording this, folks, a, a week before you uh, before you hear it. Okay. Well, and there are five MTA employees, people who work in the subways, who died of it already. Well, they would be. God, they'd be getting exposed every hour. God. When I took a walk the other day, I walked near the subway entrance. I didn't want to get too close to it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then, then it was it was taped off with yellow tape. And I went and looked at it, and it wasn't that it was because of the coronavirus. It said crime scene. Now, <laughs> you think right now the safest place to be, at least from crime, would be the subway because there's nobody in it. Uh, it's amazing. This, this is like a horror movie. It, this is it is. I mean, don't you feel? Don't you feel when you go out running that you're you? It's got to be fairly empty out there, right? Yeah, there's hardly anybody out. Yeah. I mean, you have to feel like you're living in some kind of apocalyptic movie. Like the end of the War of the Worlds when the uh, bacteria brought the Martians down. Yeah. Now, it's funny. Last week, I ran uh, one of your pieces I did with you. And um, there was, uh, uh, we never talked about this. Because we had talked about it, and I ran that one day and date, Okay. And then the one I ran was the one we had done a couple of weeks earlier. So people are probably thinking, they don't care about the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. So um, maybe I sh should always do you day and date as these things go on. I got a note from somebody the other day who said, gee, you never let Larry talk. Do you feel oh, that I t do you feel that I talk too much that I'm interrupting anything you want to say? No, I just think you've got more interesting things to say than I do. Well, that, that's not the point. I'm, I've, I've been paid to sound that way. I'm not really interesting. Uh, it's just <laughs> I uh, professionally I'm supposed to be, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, well, you're 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 very interesting. I mean, uh, tell us all about your apartment. <laughs> it's uh, probably 400 square feet, mm -hmm. and it uh, it's just boring. Yeah, you know what I mean. My greatest. You got, I, got your, I can't believe your apartment is that. It, your my sister has a house. Yeah, yeah. Are you there? Did we lose him? Oh boy. Did we lose him? I guess we lost him. Huh. Well, I'll call him back. Boy, geez, everything is going wrong today. Okay. Yeah, I guess I lost you there for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, what, what was I saying? Um, are you, you say were you talking about your sister? Yeah, her house is, she's got a house. It's literally half the square footage of your apartment. Wow. Wow. So you must, that place must be amazing. Well, it is. When they were built, when they built these things, they built them, they were supposed to be, how can I put it? It, it, they, it was one of the first apartment houses of its sort, okay, built in 1900. And the idea was is that they were mansions on top of each other. In other words, a lot of these apartments were like, uh, my apartment is half of what the original apartment was. So you can imagine how big that was, and then there was a place we have in, we have a thing called a pantry here, but it used to be the maids' room, but there also was a part of the building where they kept all the butlers and the maids. They they, so they, they are rich people. Yeah. So really, what this was was a bunch of if you, if you said let's build a bunch of mansions one right on top of another, that's what these really were, you know. 
And uh, so consequently, they chopped these in half, and there was still a humongous amount of space in each one. So it's, well, it's really... I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's really amazing. You know, I mean, but thank God we live in it during this thing, because otherwise, I mean... We'd be, going, be going we'd be going nuts, you know. So, uh, I, I, it, it's, um, you know. But um, it, it, take us around your apartment. Let's, let's give us a visual. Okay, well, in the main, the main room. You mean the, 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 yes, the, 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 the basic, what you would the call room, the. I got a dresser and a desk with my lap, my desktop computer with dial up. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a 14 year old TV that I get free channels on. Mm hmm. You know. And, a, and yeah. a bed, and that's that's the main room. And I got a, I got two big closets. Yeah. A hallway. Yeah. Bathroom and a kitchen. And the kitchen. And is the kitchen separate from everything, or is it part of the whole? It, it's separate. It, it's separate. So you yeah. you really do. It, 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 it's a studio, but it does have other rooms in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I, I guess that's okay. And the, But the problem is now, you see, Larry doesn't have things like... Have you ever heard of this thing called Netflix? Yeah, my sister has that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you don't get that. No. No, because you got to have the Internet for that. you got to have the Internet to get that. And you have dial-up. Yeah. So it slows to, down the uh, slows down the video. It idea. would slow. <laughs> I don't. You know, I don't think with dial up you can get Netflix. <laughs> you know, um, dial up. So you're you're actually roughing it during this whole thing. You know, I well, am. It's so depressing. When I'm sitting here, I, I looked to I looked under my account on uh, FiOS. And I found out that I have something like 28 different devices hooked up to the internet in this apartment. <laughs> so were I you always you were on top of the internet before we knew about it. Yeah, but I have I have all 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 the entertainment I could ever need, and you know something, there's nothing much left to watch. You know, with all that, there's nothing to watch. You know, everything's been done. You know, I'm going to binge watch some Yugoslavian soap opera. Come on, you know. Someone's the big talk now is about some uh, documentary about this guy that has tigers. I, you know, I've seen that, and it's number one on Netflix, and I can't figure out why anybody would want to watch that. I find nothing appealing about it. Yeah, it sounded pretty lame to me. So I don't know. I mean, is it just he owns tigers and that's the whole show? I think he's uh, he's got some vendetta against a woman that has tigers where she's got a big cat sanctuary or something. And, but I don't know how. It supposedly has a wild ending. But, but, I mean, is this a drama or is this a documentary? It's a documentary. Oh, boy, people really are... We're starved for entertainment. Starved for entertainment. I mean, if you well, the thing about entertainment, I think everything has been done a hundred times over. There's nothing new. Yeah, but it doesn't it make you feel, as someone who has spent your entire life honing your craft, that all you needed to do to get attention was to buy a tiger? Yeah. <laughs> You know? It would have been a lot easier than writing jokes. <laughs> you, you go, well, what is this show business stuff here? This is ridiculous. You know, I don't get it. it makes no sense. Now, why, why am I working trying to be funny and hone my craft when all I had to do was buy an elephant or something like yeah. that? You know? Now the entire world is in show business. That's true. That's true. You know, years ago, I think it was Jack Parr, who said show business has gotten so simple that one day the biggest act in show business is a guy who comes out on stage and starts his lawnmower. <laughs> and you know something? I think, right. I think we're there. 
you know? <laughs> because I could do a YouTube thing of me starting a lawnmower, and if for one reason or another, it could suddenly get a million viewers, which makes me wonder why I knock my brains out doing this show every night. Yeah. You know? Anyway, hey, listen, we run out of time again, and I hope you survive the apocalypse. I hope you too, too. I'm a little worried. I and, don't know. And I should, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'll call you between now and when the second one of these runs just to say hello. You know, That'd be great. Just to see how you're doing. because You're uh, my lifeline to the world, Alex. Well, yes, and I'm, I'm kind of your Netflix. You are. You know. And uh, do you, do let me ask you one last question here. Do you kind of feel maybe you made a mistake by not getting a high speed internet line with something like Absolutely. this going? Absolutely. Yeah, because you can't even Skype people. No. You know. Um, so maybe we got to do something about that for you. You know. I have many many times I'll go to a website and uh, I. <laughs> I know it's going to take five minutes to download, so I go make a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore is the reason why Larry Bubbles Brown is gaining weight. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I always like to talk to Larry. He also lets me... It gets me talking about things I, I like to talk about, too. So we, I, enjoy, I enjoy it, Larry. Okay. I'm reaching over. I'm, I'm adjusting the audio there. If you're watching us, if you're listening to us, I just adjusted the audio. <coughs> mm. No, what's that, a cough? Oh, if I got the coronavirus. I don't know, but I got to tell you something. Uh, when it comes to getting the coronavirus, uh, we're certainly doing a pretty good job of it here in the United States. Here's the worldwide, our look at the worldwide map. As you can see there, 1,696,139 people on the face of the earth have been confirmed as having the coronavirus. That doesn't mean that double that may have it, but the, I guess they had to be tested or something like that. Uh, but then you go to the United States, and we are leading the world. We're number one. We're number one. Go, USA. Yes, we have, right now, hit over a, a half a million. Okay? We're, we're, we're uh, excuse me. Yeah, half a million. Um, uh, we're at 500, 399. And uh, the top city, of course, uh, uh, here uh, in the United States is New York City, uh, which has a, a, a total of uh, 5,820 deaths, okay? Uh, by the way, the total deaths in uh, all of New York. Is this all of New York? Yeah, this is all of New York. Total confirmed, 5,399. Total deaths, 18,693. Is that right? And, oh, wait a minute. It's got to be something wrong there because New York City has got 5,820. Hmm. I guess I'm looking at it right. It seems right. Yep. Wow. That's interesting. Total deaths, right? There we go. And you got New York City is number one. Nassau is number two with 723. I just don't... Somehow that doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right uh, that we have uh, that many deaths in New York State. Okay? Uh, doesn't, doesn't seem right. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, if we go to Spain... Uh, oh, that's all the that's the entire United States. Excuse me. Okay, all right. I was looking at reading this all wrong. Um, uh, the uh, total uh, deaths in the United States eighteen thousand six hundred ninety three. We got Spain. They're coming in with sixteen thousand eighty one, but they only have fifty eight thousand uh, uh, confirmed. Italy, wow, 18, more than us, 18,849 out of a, a total confirmed of 147,000. 
Uh, France, uh, 13,000. Germany, 2,000. China, 3,000. Uh, United Kingdom, 8,974. Oh, well, we have a little bit of... We, we are, we, we're doing our job at uh, killing people off. Uh, they do say, however, however, they do say that the number of people uh, in uh, New York, for instance, are, we have, we today, for the first time, we had less people being, going into the hospitals uh, than uh, uh, leaving the hospital, more people leaving the hospitals than going into the hospital. And I think there was a minus something where the actual total of, of people added to the hospitals had gone down. And if you look at us, we're, we're, we're going down in a lot, of, a lot of areas. But it's for only one reason. And that's the fact that we're, as our governor says, New York strong. And we all sat around here and we just knuckled down and said, we're not, uh, we're not uh, gonna go anywhere. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with this thing. We're gonna stay in the house. And we're gonna we're gonna beat this thing, and we did it. And uh, we you know, it is going down now. If we don't, if we say, oh, well, now we can go out, well, then it's just gonna start all over again. Okay, so uh, uh, we don't want that to happen. Listen, I want you to see something. I got this online. I got this from YouTube, and uh, the name of the group that put it together, uh, you will see at the top of your uh, at the top of your screen. Okay, uh, at, uh, at the top or right uh, hand, because I, I want them to have credit because they found this footage. I've been looking for this footage, and the only place I found it on YouTube was this one and one that CNN did. And probably, I don't know, YouTube will say, oh, you stole that from CNN or whatever. So I just want you to know this is more of a private organization who found this and put this little presentation together. I want you to see this because, you know, I guess the biggest enemy of Donald Trump is Barack Obama. He never misses an opportunity to say the previous president did this and the previous president didn't do that and the reason we need the money, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. and he's always going after Obama when all Obama did was kind of keep this country afloat while he was in office. And he also occasionally would do something and create a warning uh, for people to hear about. This was recorded December, I think December 2nd, if I have it correctly. I think it'll be on the, uh, it'll say what it is on the actual uh, video. Um, uh, this was uh, uh, um, recorded, uh, he did this on December 2nd, 2014, okay? Uh, watch Barack Obama and listen to what he has to say and then compare that to what's going on now. We have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. So that if and when a new strain of flu, like the Spanish flu, crops up, five years from now, or a decade from now, we've made the investment. And we're further along to be able to catch it. The funding we're asking for is needed to keep strengthening our capacity here at home so we can respond to any future Ebola cases. It's needed to help us partner with other countries to prevent and deal with future outbreaks and threats before they become epidemics. We were lucky with H1N1 that it did not prove to be more deadly. Uh, we can't say we're lucky with Ebola because obviously it's having a devastating effect in, effect in West Africa, but it is not airborne in its transmission. There are may and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease that is deadly. Okay, so anyway, the, I, I could play the rest of it. Thanks to the uh, people at Now This. Uh, you might want to go to their site or whatever. They're the ones who put that together. Uh, uh, that was the best version of that 
particular thing that I uh, that I uh, saw. Okay, uh, but I wanted to play that because I think that it's important that we remember that he warned of this, and in fact, as a result of that speech, uh, I think he gave another one, which I wasn't able to find, where he announced that he was starting his, uh, his task force. And this was a group of people that were whose job it was to go out and, and look at all these epidemics and what the future holds in store and how, if an epidemic hit this country, we would deal with it, okay? And uh, uh, he, uh, he formed that, and then uh, when uh, Trump came into office, he disbanded it. So, uh, you know, I never want to hear another word out of uh, Donald Trump about Barack Obama, and he did this, and he didn't do that, and he was... Uh, listen, he, 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 this thing had still been in place, and they had come up with models and things to do and arsenals to man and things like that. Um, I think uh, we would be in a lot better shape today. Anyway, I've just opened up the lines, so if you want to, uh, if you want to call me, let me turn this on so the green light is on. Okay, good. God, I'm having a little like pain, like kind of thing here, like a, I don't know, a little infection or something. I don't know. It it hurts and then it doesn't hurt, so I don't know what it is. It's not a tooth, yeah, definitely. I've always got something wrong with me, and today I have, I've just been feeling like crap, and it's, oh, wait a minute, and I've been feeling like crap, uh, and it has nothing to do with uh, anything but, uh, but the fact that I'm just so sick of being indoors, and just so sick of turning on the television set and getting depressed about stuff. How about you, Rob? You feel the same way? No, I am so busy, uh -huh. I don't have uh, any any issues with it at all. Really? I don't mind being here. I have been in this studio all day long today, since 9 o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. And um, just past the time, I looked up and I said, oh, time for GabNet. Mm -hmm. I heard the piece that you just played, Great mm -hmm. Minds Think Alike. I yeah. found a little while ago a 90-second audio clip of, because we talked about this last night. Mm -hmm. And I found 90 seconds of Obama talking about the same thing. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Let me let me just let me just get this next person on here, uh, Brian Neary. Hold on a second, Brian. Are you uh, Brian? You've got to show me a picture. You got to show go. me a picture. Uh, uh, we uh, because I can't I can't go to you. Well, okay, no, you no, your camera doesn't seem to be on, Brian. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me. Wait a minute. Uh, 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 well, anyway, uh, here comes uh, Charlie Wallace, and he was in here yesterday. So I bet he even pops up somewhere here. Uh, there's comes Bree. Um, let me see here. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, first of all, uh, Bree, there you are. Okay, all right. Let me let me put Bree in here. I get, let me just take care of this first, and then we'll get back to what you were talking about. Uh, Bree, there we go. There's Bree. Um, wait a minute. Why? What is it? No, that's Charlie Wallace. Uh, yeah, there's Charlie. Okay, there's yep. Charlie Wallace. Okay, let me go to... Oh, boy, Josh. Uh, let me... Every, everybody, just hold on. I'm, I'm trying to do this as fast as I possibly can. Um, let me see here. Who Who is that? Uh, Josh Wheeler. Okay, now we got Josh in there. Now I gotta get, grab Kevin while he's calling. Boy, you people call it all all at one time, and it it it's like uh, it's a, it's a, it's a real deal. Okay, all right. Uh, 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 cancel. I'm a cancel. I've got. Uh, let's see here. We got Phil there, and then we got uh, we can, in six. Who do we have? Who do we not have here? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, the uh, the newest per Brian. Ne let's see, Brian Neary. Are you there, Brian? Yes. You got my picture now. Uh, let me see. There we go. We got yeah. Brian. Where are you calling from, Brian? I'm trying to remember where you call from. Uh, San Jose, California, Silicon Valley. Uh, San Jose, uh, California. Okay. Well, hold on a second. Somebody is just calling using the phone. Oh, I hate when they do that. Let me see here. Who who is? Let me see who it is first. Who is this? Hello. Who is this? Hello. Well, it's nobody that I know. So, um, 
Screw it. Um, <clears throat> Why don't you get rid of that number? What number is it? Uh, you know, I would I would like to get rid of them. Hello, are you no, there? No, no. He means get rid of the. You what? mean get rid of the phone number, the the, the three four seven. Uh, well, here comes yeah, Tony Ma Magno. You know something? I may do that. You know. Uh, let me see here. Here comes Tony Magno, and I don't want this guy. Okay, so, well, anyway, uh, let me let me go uh, with Tony. Uh, I've got number seven, Tony. He's webhead. Okay, there we go. Are you are you there, Tony? Oh, I gotta turn oh, that yeah. on. And here we go. Ba bum. All right. Now we're all see. Look how many people we got already. Just starting off. Okay. Now, uh, wait a minute. Ke Kevin, are you there? Oh, do I have Kevin in there? No, I don't have Kevin in there. Okay. Let me go put Kevin in there, and then we'll be ready to completely go here in a second. Just give me one moment, and I go to a hog rider. Um, bu 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 bum. There we go. Okay. Um, usually, when this happens, occasionally during the breadth and width of, of the show, uh, I just do it as they come along one by one while we're all talking. But everybody call at one time and look, the gang bang. Here we are, all nine of us already. Anyway, hello, Josh. Hello, Phil. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Brian. Hello, Tony. Hello, Rob. Hello, Charlie. Rob, you were going to talk about something now, about a piece of audio. I'm sorry? Rob, you were going to talk no, about yeah, it? No, yeah, I, I had, uh, I, I took, I found a 90-second clip of, of Barack Obama talking about in 2014. Mm -hmm. Some of it's the same as what you played. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, this is so apropos for the discussion that we had last night about mm -hmm. what the last administration did mm -hmm. and tried to set up. When yeah. he didn't have any control of Congress because the Republicans had taken over in 2010, and what he proposed, yeah, and, and uh, trying to get this done, and had that happened, we'd be in a much better place right now instead of right. having this administration completely disband any of it, all of it. Okay, so uh, do you have that clip? I do. Okay, uh, why don't you uh, uh, let me see? Why don't you why don't you play it? Okay, here we go. Okay. There. Are may and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease that is deadly. And in order for us to deal with that effectively, we have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. So that if and when a new strain of flu like the Spanish flu crops up five years from now or a decade from now, we've made the investment. And we're further along to be able to catch it. I cannot think of a better example of an area where we should all agree than passing this emergency funding to fight Ebola and to set up some of the public health infrastructure that we need to deal with potential outbreaks in the future. How do you argue with that? That is not a partisan issue. That is a basic common sense issue that all Americans can agree on. For the most part, people have recognized this is not a Democratic issue or a Republican issue. It's about the safety and security of the American people. So let's get it done. Yeah. Get caught up in uh, normal politics. We need to protect the American people. And we need to show the world how America leads. Ah, how America leads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I just, uh, I just have to say for all the Republicans out there, that Obama, what a douche, huh? Yeah, what a douche. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah by the way, by the Obama. way, uh, Jeff, you, Jeff, you don't have your camera on. Yeah, I'm that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what were you going to say, Charlie? I said, yeah, Obama didn't. He cares about the lives of the people instead of how rich people are going to do. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. Go figure. Well, I mean, you know. he also he also he saw this coming because he saw what was happening with Ebola. It could have come here, but it didn't. OK. And he saw the need to have some kind of an infrastructure to have a something in place in case some kind of pandemic were to hit this country. And, and it was with the H1N1 yeah. that was bringing all that up. Yeah. Right. You know, and 
I was just playing the short the short uh, version that you had there uh, mm-hmm. down in the in the front room with my wife, and she goes, "Boy, I liked listening to him talk." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so 2014, he started the Global Health Commission. The only thing and I miss. Yeah. With, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead, so Brian. With, yeah, with that, he had the pandemic playbook. And so if you remember, so Alex, my company is Cepheid. Mm-hmm. We're the one that came up with a 45-minute test before uh, Abbott Labs came up. Uh-huh. Uh, so I've been there 16 years now, so as a startup. We started with uh, wow. anthrax, with, uh, and we started getting into infectious disease. So we were there for Zika, for the government. We're there for Ebola, mm-hmm. and we're usually the first company that they will call. And um, so, yeah, I think Obama had it dialed in with this pandemic playbook you know it's just like every company now Hmm. every company now you know if you have we're running 24 7 right now to keep up with covid and regular flu and then Mm -hmm. we also have other assays that we're trying to keep up with but um you know even our job we have we've had two people test positive and we had a playbook there that if that does happen what are we doing with the rooms what are we doing with the people Mm -hmm. and every company has to have that now yeah well now now let me let's go back to this thing that obama he created the commission right Mm-hmm. What happened to that commission? <laughs> Remember when everybody Congress. said he, he's going to get us in trouble and signing all these things, you know, killing all these programs that Obama had, and unfortunately that was one of them. Okay. Uh, uh, Phil, you're rather yeah. quiet about this. I'm reading about it. You're reading about it? What, you, you don't believe audio? Uh, no, no, no. I, I wanted to know when, he did, when uh, Trump disbanded it what he did mm-hmm. why he did it 2018 mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm looking the Spanish national security council unit focused on pandemic preparedness he fired the mm-hmm. leader he fired the guy who was in control of that pandemic commission yeah that would have protected his economy yeah it sure would yeah mm-hmm. that would have protected the economy it would have protected those 18,000 lives that have died, too. Well, but I think more important to him is the economy. <laughs> so if he had... Protected the economy? If, I'm sorry? You know what else would have protected the economy? If the World Health Organization... Oh, Jesus. Oh, Don't even start with me. Don't even start with that. Don't even start with that. Don't even start with that. You can't put the blame on them for anything that you didn't try to do the opposite of. Okay, so don't I, I give me that. You don't don't question. parrot your your little suck ass president. You, you sit down for a second, Big Al. I want to ask Brian something because not only do I trust him, but uh, you know he'll tell the truth. Is there any truth to this World Health Organization accusations that uh, that they lied to not only the world but to the United States? Uh, as well as the Chinese, you know, because you were wrapped up in the in the beginning of this. Sure. The, Phil, the only thing that I would say is that the the five or six other issues that we had going on with Zika and, and H1N1, the response for that through Obama was very, very quick. Yeah. So I, I believe that playbook was still alive, and if they took it seriously, it, it would have been a lot better than it was. Now. I understand, but what does that have to do with what I've been hearing which is that we were lied to as to the uh, the effects of this and whether it was going to come to the states and, and so forth. I, 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 I'm not sure. Did, Regardless, did, did you as a company place, who, who could have just ignored yeah. all that shit and we would have we'd have been on it. Did yeah. you did you do you as a, a, a did you as a company that deals in making these kind of methodologies and so on feel that something might be coming? Uh, we take a lot of those seriously, but you know what? The the government won't get involved until somebody dies in the U.S. When it comes here, then they really enact stuff. But did you see it? Did you kind of see that it was going to be a problem here? That it oh, had to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so flu is our biggest seller, yeah. and we already we are already producing a lot. About eighty uh, percent of our products were going out were flu, mm-hmm. and then when we heard this one coming up, we knew it was going to be bad. Yeah. And, and so how come how come our, our president didn't? Because he, he listened to the World yeah. Health Organization, who he now hates, because even, he listened to even, them? Even, yeah, even Scarfy, you know, the lady you call Scarfy? I like calling her yeah. Scarfy, yeah. Yeah. Scarfy, yeah. She said, today she said uh, something about the, the assay was very complex. 
flex for this one and all the special stuff. And it wasn't. It, it's a modified flu. I mean, very, very different effects, of course. But when we're taking flu and we convert it over to, to coronavirus, mm -hmm. for us, it's very, very easy. But we have to go through the FDA. So it usually takes about a year and a half to get anything done through them. Mm -hmm. But for us, we have the emergency task force, so we, we get things done pretty quick through the FDA. Yeah. Because we've done the other assays, too. Yeah. But 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 what I think Phil was saying was, well, didn't, didn't uh, the World Health Organization lie to the rest of the world? In other words, he was he was baiting the question. <clears throat> yeah, so, I don't think they were, but yeah. all right, it doesn't matter. All right, so you got your answer, Phil. Yeah, has the reaction okay. How do you feel about his answer? I trust his answer. Oh, okay. Uh, well, then stop. Anybody else want to talk? No, I want to ask Brian one other question. <laughs> okay. The previous flus, you said that they didn't do anything until there was a death in this country. Uh, in previous flus, was it the same thing? Yeah, no, because we we already monitored the stuff coming over, so we, we already started looking at H one N one, and we're ready to to make changes. But um, yeah, I think just because of the huge flu demand with the coronavirus, we saw stuff coming. But like I said, until somebody starts giving us money to do, we're a company, so yeah. we, we don't yeah. react until that, you know. Yeah, uh, Josh. So what yeah. Tell, tell the president or somebody, their task force, which they, you know, eliminated, comes mm -hmm. to us and starts saying stuff. We won't do anything. How are you coming along on on uh, stuff for this? I mean, will we, will we have a, 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 what do you call it, an inoculation we can get that will prevent us from so, getting it? So we, yeah, we only do testing. Mm -hmm. So we only do detection. So what we do is well, okay. we'll take. The, we'll take the sample. We have a cartridge that we have. Mm -hmm. We take the sample, break it off in there, and the cartridge does everything in our unit. So everything is based on software. Mm -hmm. It's not like Abbott. Yeah. Abbott's all batch, so they have to wait until they have 50, and then they'll run all their tests. So I know last night you were talking about people going in like to work and get a test in 5 or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. but they won't be able to do that. So What's that um, portable one that Abbott has? It, it looked like it was one, one thing, and they stuck a Q-tip in it, and that was it. Uh, yeah. you know, it's like a desktop unit. Yeah. So, somebody I, had I'm their hand. Sure. Somebody else had their hand up here. Kevin, was it you? Rob, I think. Oh, was it, Rob, was it Rob. Rob? Was Rob? Yeah. So. Yeah. Part of what I do for a living is I speak to companies, businesses, governments about disaster situations and being prepared for them. One of the ones that's hitting right now in business and it's hitting lots and lots of governments is ransomware, right? Now, it costs money to prepare and, 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 and to be prepared when that kind of thing happens. You can choose not to deal with it, and then when it happens, you're going to pay the ransom, and it's going to be a lot of money. And once they're in, as soon as you get your data open, they're going to ask for more money, right? It's a disaster. It costs money to deal with disasters. When companies don't prepare, then they have the, – I don't hear them making excuses like our administration is making excuses, pointing at everything else and pointing out the one good thing he did, which was to stop travel between China and here. That is the only thing that this man can point to that he did. So, okay, he did that. Wonderful. He didn't do anything else, and he, and he, and he destroyed an infrastructure that was put in place by the previous administration who five years ago, and in fact, he said it, five years from now, we can have a pandemic. In 2019, it happened at the end of it, in 2014, it happened in the end of 2019 that we had this nasty pandemic that could put us in a depression. Kevin. So, Brian, you when was the first? We when was our good. first uh, U.S. Uh, issue was here? What uh, January? I think it's January 20th or something. Uh, yeah, and you heard get, about the the Hollister yeah. death, yeah, right? We, we didn't get contacted until February 10th. Okay, so that's a right around when the Hollister issue happened, right? Probably. So yeah. I'm from down in Hollister. Yeah. Was that what kind of triggered you guys to go? Because I'm from the Bay Area as well, and I remember with H1N1, I was I was running a warehouse, and we were in a plant right there off of Montague, mm -hmm. and we're a pretty big company, mm -hmm. and our company was all over H1N1, and mm -hmm. literally we had kits, we had an H1N1 officer, I was the assistant H1N1 officer. We had kits, we had everything, and and we were screening people at our gate when they came into the gate, mm -hmm. and we were doing stuff way ahead 
before, you know, even Obama was starting to say, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this. <laughs> and that that thing never really blossomed the way it was supposed to. He was all over it. Right. And this one is just like, it, it's a bigger deal, but it seems like it just blossomed out of control. But if you have things in place for like, like what you guys are saying for the ransomware, if you have these in place just because, I mean, business continuity plans, right? Yeah. You know, that's what every company has. And now we have a pandemic business continuity plan. Yes, you know, that's exactly what we had. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. I'm sure all the television networks and news networks also have a plan now, but they had to invent it as they were going along by getting these cameras into everybody's home and the, uh -huh. the, the green screens in their homes and things like that, you know. Uh, I, I mean, it's amazing how resilient the American people have been in this when it came to getting stuff done. But, um, uh, you know, yeah. this, uh, let me ask you this, Brian, because you're the, obviously the expert. <laughs> in the, the expert. No, no. But I mean, I it, to get some kind of feeling from you. Sure. How long do you think it's going to be before we can start sending people back to work? Or as the president goes, get the economy going again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I thought. Uh, let's go back a little bit. I thought that the thing. I thought every, everything would start calming down a little bit when we got the tests out. I think the tests out were very, very important. Now you have like forty different companies that are producing tests, and you know we still can't keep up. Um, but I don't. We don't have any tests in Texas. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, they can't keep up. Yeah. Well, I mean, we do forty thousand a day. Yeah, yeah we're making and 40, at 40,000 a day, how long will it take before we get around to at least half the population? There's exactly, 40, and, and our Sweden facility just got approved also, so they're making about twenty to 30,000 a day, and there's still not enough. So mm -hmm. I, I think the testing was really big, and mm -hmm. now, you know, man, I Is, can't see it more than a couple months, but I don't know what normal's going to be. You know, it, it just depends on, on if this goes, not goes away. I don't want to say like Trump, you know, but, but how, how are we going to get a vaccine? And, and can we get this in control like we've gotten other things? Or is it, or is it something that's just crazy? Let me, well, here, here's the thing. There's become a new kind of wrinkle that's come into yeah. play here. And that is that China now, because they loosened everything up, they let people go back to work and then go, go to their restaurants and their movie theaters. And now it's breaking out again. Yeah. And yeah, what about the churches coming up this weekend? That's going to be very interesting. Yeah. Your, your lovely state of Florida that you love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they give that exception for churches, that's going to be a great sample for us, right? Yeah. We're going to see if, if they go crazy, like, you know, these other events that the people have not stayed home, and if it goes crazy again, well, I think we'll see where we are there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, Josh, what do, you, what do you think about all of this? What do you, first of all, what do you think Charlie about the Obama uh, clip that we played? I mean, I, I think his administration would have been prepared you know, mm -hmm. because whether or not you would agreed with, you know, their political ideas, I mean, they had a, a, a good of a full amount of competent people, you know, working. And I mean, I would go so far as to say the same thing with, you know, administrations before that. I mean, I certainly wasn't a huge fan of, you know, George W. Bush or, you know, I didn't vote for him and I don't think he was the greatest president. Um, but I think he had a lot of people that worked in the administration, those daily people that do those daily jobs that keep us going were people of competence, you know, for the most part. And I, I just, but I don't feel like that's the case now. I think a lot of those career people, hardworking people were pushed out over, you know, silliness or vendettas or, you know, whatever, and yeah. replaced by a lot of people who are basically just operating in amateur hour. And, and I think this is the kind of stuff that you get when you have amateur hour. I mean, basically what we did was we took the guy who calls and do the sports show every week acting like he could run the football team, and we let him run the football team, and we got rid of the GM. And we found out guy who calls the sports show all, all the time, mm -hmm. it's not as easy as he thought it was. I mean, that, that's what we did here. We went and got a guy who basically ran his mouth, and this is what we ended up with. So um, yeah, let me let me. Charlie's got his hand up. Charlie, yeah, you asked the question, 
at 40,000 test kits a day, in 100 days, you would have 4 million test kits. That's like 10% of the country. 36 million. 100 days is over three months. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're... To get even 40 million, you would have to have 1,000 days. That's over three years. You ask when it's going to be ready, it's not going to be able to go back until we have enough test kits for every fucking American citizen in, in the United States. I, 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 here, here. So you send one person out there with the disease that you don't know has the disease, and he can spread it to hundreds of people. All right. Well, and here's the other question that I have is, okay, let's say to, we, we, we say a company says, everybody that comes to work has to be tested, okay? And they come to work, and you can, make, you can answer this one for us, Brian, and they, and they have to get tested. And once they get tested, they say, okay, now you can come back to work because you're fine. Then he goes home, hangs out with a friend who's got it, and now comes back to work and gives it to everybody. I mean, just because people take a test doesn't mean that they're cleared for, for, for landing, you know? Right. right. Mm. Am I, am, am I they, right in that? Be tested one, adjunct to that? One adjunct to that, Brian, does, does everyone need a test? Or, you know, is that the model that needs to be in place or... I don't know, but you know, people say they don't have symptoms and they're they're carrying it. So yeah, up to two weeks. That's the scary part. If people, if you can say if you have a fever, you have it, yeah. and if you don't have a fever, you don't have it, then it'd be easy. But it's not. Also, people have to be motivated to go get the test. People are not going to come to your house, yeah. t hold you down on your bed, and and take a swab. You know, you have to volunteer it, and you're only going to volunteer it if you think you might be sick. Now, Brian yeah. showed me a picture of the first test. Uh, at, did, did you take the test? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that I don't need yours. to. <laughs> <laughs> but if I cough, I will. <laughs> if, if you feel you have any of the possible symptoms. But if you but, cough, you could have spread it to a thousand people. But, I mean, oh, yeah. just, because we, yep. just because we test this, uh, you know, doesn't mean that the guy isn't going to come to work the next day carrying the virus so uh, so i uh, you know I, I i think we have to we have to stay indoors for a right. while we gotta yes. we have to keep a distance you know to that the, person today. will get on the subway and how many people will he spread it to well, forget about yeah. getting into today the to, today i went to I, see I, the software i, I left the house for the first time today that and uh, i don't know how long i can't remember i you know and i went down to simply down to the mailbox to get the mail and to get a package. And as I get down to the main floor, there's somebody there who wants to use the elevator. And we're doing this like cha-cha dance around each other. <laughs> and she said, well, you know, I can hold the elevator for you. And I said, no, you better go up because of the distance thing and then just send it back down when you get up there. So that's the way we did it. But now I got, got upstairs and I had the packages and I'm going, hmm, is there gonna be any bugs on these packages so i spraying them all down and then i'm washing the gloves and then i'm taking the gloves off and i'm washing the hands you know i mean uh, uh, it's uh, it, it, it's amazing what i'm what i've done to try and just avoid this totally I'm did you see the uh, phone software that google has come up with for uh, if somebody is tested and they have and they had the virus or they have the virus uh, this the this phone app will alert you if you come into close proximity to the to the person that had the virus, and if that person uh, uh, does something or oh tries to take the app off, it will delete all their information. And uh, this is uh, you know what they were talking about tonight. And it's uh, not out yet though. No, it's not out. No, it's it, not out. And and you know if they do it. I'll bet you any amount of money you've got, there are going to be lawsuits like you won't believe. Right. Yes. Well, who, who, ha so who has his hand they're up? They're using it in Singapore. They're, oh, they're using oh, it? Free. Yes, it's already. Just track and trace Singapore app. Look it up. Yeah, oh. but you won't get that approved here because we have different rules in terms of, you know, well, the Constitution. Right? Mm -hmm. Privacy is well, here. all it has to do is, like, say that somebody's got the virus who doesn't, and they're going to say, look, you've made me a pariah. Uh, I'm suing Google, all right, and I, I don't. I think they could probably win a suit like that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, you know, I mean, all, uh, the best measure we have right now is we got to realize that we have to come up with a whole new way of living in this country, 
and changing what we do and how we do it. Uh, that that uh, having this many people in one country at one time is going to be fraught with all kinds of problems. Because, you know, you go up to Greenland and they don't, they've had like one case, <laughs> you know. But then again, they got two people. Um, Take care of sheep. Huh? I, I, Jeff, I, sheep. I was walking the dog today. Yeah. yeah. And there was a woman sitting in a chair on, on, the, um, on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, she had her dog with her, and I said, well, "Do these dogs get along?" She says, "Well, I think they do, but you're too close." You know, uh, I think that people are scared, and uh, you know, th this time uh, people are taking it seriously, mm -hmm. and I think it is going to change the way we interact <clears throat> with people. Uh, you know, hey, maybe if I look like Tom Cruise, she wouldn't have said I was too close. But you know, the but people, the way they interact, I don't think people are going to shake anymore. Uh, and uh, uh, you know what? I think gonna... it's going to change. And uh, Donald Trump never liked it. <laughs> Let me see if if uh, who uh, disagrees with me on this. I'm sure Phil will disagree with me, but I think this is going to change the way we handle the economy of this country. Uh, we don't have an economy. <laughs> well, we don't have an economy. Yeah. I mean, American-made or uh, things made in the no, States? No, I'm just or? talking about business in general, just the idea of, of these massive corporations and so on, and that, uh, uh, you know, that all of a sudden, if you're, if you're one of the people who works for that corporation and something like this happens, all of a sudden you're out of work, and also are 10,000 of your other friends, like in Ge General Motors, for instance. Good example. Mm -hmm. Um I think maybe we're going to have to rethink just the whole way the economy works, and and well, and and also call what up kind Andrew of Yang. hmm. Call up Andrew Yang. Well, I'm sorry, we can't find him these days. He, he, he he's got another. <laughs> he told us this is all he said during his entire his entire campaign. That's all he said. Yeah. Well, basically, it's, if you don't have a skill or if you're not smart, you're not going to you, survive. You know. You know what I'm what I'm <laughs> I'm I'm wondering is how many of the th ideas that um, uh, Bernie um, uh, uh, Bernie came up with. Uh, Sanders? Sanders, yes. Colonel Sanders. Uh, Bernie Sanders came up with uh, are going to start being thought about because in light of this whole deal, we've got to look for other modalities of and ways of doing business that don't include, you know, uh, what we're, you know, what we have been doing. Uh, we're going to isolate it. 17 million people that Wait. wish we had Medicare for all. I mean, I, I don't really think you're going to see any of that, though. I mean, look, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Mm. I'm just saying, I think if things clear up, and, and they will, mm -hmm. about 15 minutes after it's over, Americans will remember that they're greedy. Companies like mine and all the rest will go right back to doing everything that they did before mm -hmm. in order to make massive amounts of money. Well, I mean, the question is, question right, is, right. I mean, what's... the economy crashed in 2008 because the people who run it virtually crashed it themselves. And about 20 minutes after it was over with, they all looked around and said, is anybody looking? Let's okay. do it again. Yeah. Do it again. But, but my question is, what's going to happen, for instance, uh, let's take something simple, movie theaters. Uh, I, I bring them up every now and then and say, I think the movie theaters is, is, is through. I don't think yeah. people are going to want to go to a movie theater where they're sitting within six feet of somebody else. Okay? And that, that, what does that do to the movie theater? It cuts their, their seating by half. All right? Um, and most people will say, "Hell, I'm not going to a, I'm not going to a movie theater." I think that business is is has been killed by this. I think any places restaurants will have to take their uh, their seating and cut it in half, in order to make people feel comfortable to be seat, sitting in a restaurant. So it's going to affect the economy in ways that the economy is going to have to adapt to. Of course, now they'll charge twenty dollars, forty dollars for the steak instead of twenty dollars for the steak, but. I think they're going to have to have half as many. Like uh, you like going to Ruth, Ruth Chris's, uh, uh, Phil. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, I mean, do you think would you feel comfortable going in there and sitting right next to somebody at the table next to you? Uh, the tables aren't that close, but on. Uh, but you know what strikes me is mm -hmm. it's not so much the restaurants because they can deal with that. 
uh, raise the prices, move people away. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the subway, the tra public right. transportation. Yeah. That, yeah. For how many years we've been trying to get people out of cars and yeah. into public transportation? Now in San Francisco, they're not even running the buses mm -hmm. because uh, they're petri dishes, as uh, Alex yeah. would say. Rob, and then well, the, and then the, the idea, the idea of separating tables at a restaurant. If you go with a you know a group of four or five people, no one's going to want to sit that close together, even at a table, unless you're just your family. You go out with a bunch of workers at night. Where's the bar? What happens to the bar? Are people going to elbow up to a bar together? Real, I mean, think about it. I mean, and 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 to uh, uh, to Josh's point, I agree that Americans will get greedy again. The the one thing is that that can change that is what the debt what the effects are of this. If we get out of it relatively unscathed, I agree with you. But if there are really long lasting effects and the economy really tanks and twenty to thirty percent of people are out of work, that's not going to happen so quickly. To so just forget about it. is is the inflation that we're going to have from the uh, two trillion and it may be more. Uh, you know, you can't keep throwing money at this kind of stuff and then expect to come out of it unscathed. Uh, the uh, in 2008, like Josh mentioned, uh, we had a big bubble. It was because they kept throwing loaning money and it was it was like a free for all uh, where now here, uh, you know, people are calling for socialism and socialized medicine. But what's going to happen is there's no money to pay for it. You know, uh, and uh, it's, it, you know, eventually they run out. Just well, like they, you know, they, I, I, you, you can say that we're going to be a poor nation after this is all over. And you're probably right. But so is every other nation in the world. Yes, Bree. Well, I, I think that after a year or so, you know, people will feel more comfortable with that. I, I think back to my time uh, early last month where the guy sneezed in a restaurant in Singapore and I gave him the death stare and yelled at him. And now I, I and I said at the time, I think this should be fineable. I think that mm. it should be, you know, illegal. If you know, I mean, you do it twice, you know what you're doing. Uh, the first time people say, oh, people sneeze, you can't affect it. But the second time you could catch it. And, and nowadays you have to catch it. You know, so I, I think that that it'll take a year to two years before we, you know, sort of get back into that that swing of things. Now, in terms of the economy, Trump will print as much money as he wants. He, he doesn't care about inflation. He just cares about how do I get through this in the immediate short term. So he'll do anything, anything that he has to do. If he has to send out another two trillion and then another two trillion after that, he doesn't care. That's how he ran his businesses. He ran his businesses by, mm -hmm. you know, basically what the reason why he's able to exist is because we're we're a big world and there are a lot of people. Anytime he doesn't like someone or he needs something or he doesn't want to pay, he just goes to the next one and then and he uses the system. So this is what he's what I think he will do, uh, you know, as he runs the country. He'll just say, print more money, send more money to people. And that's what's going to happen. And and we can say, oh, no, that's going to cause inflation. Oh, no, that's going to he doesn't care about that. He just cares. Get two thousand dollars to this person and let them vote for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's what we're going to see. Uh, uh, Tony. You know, I was I was thinking about it. I, I think it's going to be a lot worse than people think on a lot of different levels. And I can tell you how I see it. First of all, unless they, even if they don't have a vaccine, if they don't have antibiotics that can fight this, nothing's ever going to be the same again until they have some kind of meds that if you get it, they can treat you. They can't really treat you yet. So, And as far as the economy, Trump's in an eight ball, and I'll tell you why, Phil. Alex, even if he says, I want to open up the things, he's going to have a civil war because he can't tell the governor of New York, you got to open. Is he going to make that decision to force him? <laughs> well, here, I'm not opening. OK, I and, I, and I, I, I know I, I'm, I know Phil will. Uh, if, uh, let's go to Brian first. Yes, Brian. Uh, Bree, Bree. So you're in Singapore, right? Where are no, you? he's in Malaysia. No, I'm in, Ma I'm Malaysia. in Malaysia. And so how how is life over there right now? I, I've missed a few of the shows lately, but how how the streets, how the people, what's different? Yeah, I mean, we're we're under lockdown um, since, uh, you know, early March. And it's going to go now until uh, they said the 28th of April. Uh, oh. April has 30 days. So uh, we were thinking maybe they, they were off by two days. <laughs> They're probably extended beyond that. They seem to go every two weeks. They don't like to announce further than that because I think it freaks people out. Um, 
it, it totally depends on who you are um, and where you live um, to, to a large extent. I mean, my neighbors across the street still have a party and they invite workers over. There's a worker over there right now washing cars, washing their carport. Uh, he's not supposed to be there. It, that is definitely illegal. If I took a picture of that, I could send it to the police. The guy would get fined and they would get fined. But I don't do that because it's, I don't know, you know, it's not my business. If he, if he starts walking over towards my house, it would be my business. Um, so, you know, uh, we can still go to the grocery store. you got to wait in a long line um, to get in. Most of the products are still there. Some are not. Um, you know, it, so I and they keep announcing stimulus bills here and there for they have different. See, what was interesting in the States, we kind of said stimulus for everybody. But here they do it based on your income. So they, they call them uh, like different families are like M20, B40 or something like that. And it depends on how much money you make per month. And then that's how much money you, you will get. Uh, and they have they have deals for uh, small, medium sized businesses. So they're trying their best to keep it to keep it afloat. But the, the issue is, mm -hmm. I, I don't know where this ends. And, let, you know, Bill Gates says we have to have a vaccine. We have to have some way to treat it. He yep. doesn't think it's till next year. Some people are saying, well, you know, it takes 10 to 12 months to get a vaccine. I'm sure Trump will fast track. Any, I'm sure he's already telling them there are no rules. You just test on anybody right now. Uh, but even doing that, uh, I think it's going to be three, four, five, six months. So we're going to have to have coordinated plans for what you open, when and how. Singapore has done that. If you look at their plan, they they have it mapped out. Uh, we need to do that. We need to do it quickly, um, you know. Yeah. Now opinion. let me let me let me well uh, you know um, we're 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 dealing with a question here of also how many people can work from home now I mean uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. my wife has been working from home and she says the only problem is there are certain papers she's got at the office that she doesn't have access to but if she had known it in advance she probably would have put <laughs> them all on the computer so she could do it from here but she she does most of her job from here. Now, I'm not saying, and her company happens to be a Chinese-based company, uh, uh, and uh, they, uh, you know, there's all, every, they're, they're getting the business done. You know, it's just that uh, her people, they're in, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, they're in, they, they go around buying companies and things like that for this Chinese firm, and uh, they can't do that right now because they can't leave the country. There's, you know, they can't get on an airplane to get out of this country. Yeah. And yeah. once they got to the other country, nobody's going to be there to see them. So the only thing, the, the office, she can still keep running, but the business kind of comes to a grinding halt. In fact, business all over the world has come to a grinding halt. So, you know. How, lo how long is that going to last? How long can it last? How long can it last? Because the, the uh, poor are You know, I had, a, I had a vision. Much. I had a vision today of uh, every bad science fiction movie I've ever seen about the end of the world, like The yep. Last Man on Earth with Charlton Heston, and, and, and uh, seeing that, you know, well, it gets to that. You know, that's, that's the bad end of this whole thing. Everybody dies except for this one guy, and I hope it's me. Yes, Brian. <laughs> so so I, I've, been in, I've been in charge of manufacturing for 15 years there. I just got a promotion uh, about three or four months ago before everything started hitting. Uh, so I'm in charge, of, I'm director in charge of all the manufacturing projects. Mm -hmm. So these projects we have going, we're expanding into India, expanding into China, and there are some bigger expansion projects. Mm -hmm. And so I've been going in the morning mm -hmm. and I do some meetings there. Then I come home around noontime and have meetings. And sometimes I'll stay a little bit later till like three or four. And I go down 101, and I'm going like 70 miles an hour, and there's like five cars on the road, where usually that's four or five lanes of traffic. Yeah. It's so bizarre. And, and, you know, you're in that mode of, you know, we're, we're busy at our factory, so so the parking lot's full, running 24-7. And I get in my car, and I take off, and I just go down, and I go and hit 101, and all of a sudden it dawns on me. It's like, wow. You start you know, getting this flash of like, what's really It's not Sunday. <laughs> Brian, well, you, the, you, didn't, you don't run into any checkpoints on the highway. No. There's a hell, Harry no, Bell. But, here here oh, you can't oh. go, you can't go a mile. They're going to check you. Uh, wow. there, there aren't any in the Bay Area that I know of. No, yeah. Well, I have a letter from, uh, it's from the fire battalion guy from Santa Clara County 
saying that we are an essential business running COVID and all that stuff. So we have a letter that we have to keep, yeah. all the employees have to keep with them in case they do get pulled over. Yeah, yeah last time that happened, Brian, was uh, 9-11. There was a film oh. they were showing on TCM the other the night airport. called... Yeah. called that was, uh, oh, my warehouse was right under the airport. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. They were showing a film on TCM the other night called, I think, The World of Flesh and the Devil, I think was the name of it, in which Harry Belafonte is in a mine when something happens to the rest of the world. He comes out and everybody's gone. So he gets a car and goes to New York City and he meets up with two other people and uh, a woman and a guy who happens to be a racist, you know. Mm-hmm. This was made in that period of time where this was the the uh, topic du jour. And they had shots of New York City, absolutely empty. And I'm going... In order to do that, they had to block off traffic at 5 o'clock in the morning during the summer when the sun was up and be able to shoot Times Square with nobody in it. Today, you could probably go down to Times Square this af- well late this afternoon and you would be able to take almost the same shot. You know, My uh, friend Stoney was taking those I shots. I know you were he saying that. You said that last night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, and he was he was trying to do it with a uh, with a uh, what do you call it a, with, with a drone, not at Times Square, but uh, I I, I got to ask him where he tried to use the drone. Well, it's illegal to use a drone in in the yeah. city of Manhattan, New York. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so uh, it, let me know where he's going to be next, and I'll have him arrested. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Bree. It's all called into the show, uh, Bree. <laughs> Someone posted on uh, my media feed. I thought it was funny. It said. Um, you know all those movies I've watched where there's some crazy, whacked-out kid or scientist who says, if we don't stop this now, millions of people will die. And then there's some bozo in the government who all says, don't be so alarmist. We don't have to, you know, it's not going to get that bad. And then the person would say, I never thought there were, you know, that, that's completely unrealistic. And that says, I apologize to all those movies that got it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't want to bring this up, but I think seem to remember on this program at one point when this thing first started hitting and I was talking about a possible pandemic, Phil saying, I'm just one of these people that's an alarmist. Well, yes, there are people trying to get this point. that, that yeah. are oh, trying yeah. to alarm and use sensationalism in the media to 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 make yeah. this. Uh, I've I've been known to be a sensationalist. Yeah, yeah. 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 science. Yeah. Yeah. it's all yeah. about science. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Je- Jeff, and you got to turn your mic on. But Jeff has his hand up, and I want I want to be able to get him. Yes, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Uh, do you remember, like in 1953? And I, I remember I was I was a kid, like eight years old. And we had it all, every kid at school had to get injections. Well, that was for polio, was I think. A, Wasn't that for no. polio? Yeah. I got and, it. You know, everybody was getting polio and yeah. all this stuff. And so everybody got injected. Well, I would assume it was the, the whole Well, I, I, I will once again tell the story I tell any number of times whenever this comes up, and that there was a guy by the name of Dave Garraway who used to do the Today Show on, yeah. uh, on NBC. And uh, one night he was uh, all dressed up, getting in a tuxedo, getting ready to go out. And his son said to him, where are you going? He says, I'm going to a testimonial dinner. He said, for who? He said, uh, for Jonas Salk. And the kid said, who's Jonas Salk? He said, he's the guy who discovered uh, the cure for polio. And the kid looked at him and said, what's polio? (laughs) And that's a perfect polio. 65 years ago to this day. Really? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we took a disease, a disease that literally was, it went after children, which was the horrible part about it. I mean, they called it, one of the names they had for it that we've since forgotten is infantile paralysis was the term they mm-hmm. used. And uh, uh, it, was, it was just a devastating disease because of what it did to children. Not only sometimes killed them, put them in iron lungs and whatever, but the thing is that in a, with, with, in, within a short amount of time, we completely obliterated that disease from the face of the earth. It no longer existed. It started coming back because people were so complacent about it years later because yeah. hey whatever happened to polio that they didn't get their kids a polio shot every you know when they should have uh and so it started to come back it's not like it was but it came back am i right about that brian about polio do you know about it uh no oh okay 
Mm. Yeah, we used to get the shots on the old mark. Yeah, I still have the scar. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. get a mark yeah. on your arm. In, uh, that, no, that, that, small, that was small. That was that was for oh, that yeah. was for smallpox. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, it was a smallpox. That that was not a shot. That was a vaccination. That's right. And the yeah. reason you got the the scar was because they had to like prick you several times. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, did, did FDR have polio as a kid, or no, did that develop adult, later? Adult. He he went out one night. He went out swimming uh, yeah. in upstate New York. He was, I think, in his late twenties, maybe. And yeah. uh, he woke up the next morning with a chill, and by the afternoon, he couldn't walk. So yeah, my my wife's aunt had it. So mm. it was able to transmit that way. Here's what here's start. what I heard about. Yeah. I read a book yeah. on polio. And it's very interesting about polio. I don't know if you're completely familiar with the, the metrics on this, Brian. But polio, they found what may have caused polio to exist was how clean we were. Yeah. That up to a certain point, we had not been a particularly clean nation. I mean, you would go down to the Lower East Side, and there would be horse manure all up and down the street, right? And so what happened is kids got antibodies from the day they were born, massive amounts of antibodies from all these things that they could get. So that we then suddenly cleaned up our society. No more manure on the side of the roads. Oh, hey, wash your hands. Take indoor plumbing. Take a, a shower. Blah, 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 blah. We got too clean. And so all of a sudden, well, these antibodies weren't there anymore. And here was this little lingering bug that kids really didn't get because they had the the the, uh, the the defense against it, who no longer had that defense. So with all our hand washing, we're going to get polio again? Uh, 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 well, I mean, we have, we have the polio shot now, so you don't have to get it. Yes, well, Brian. That, I mean, that uh, also Kevin. brings back the, the whole thing with the uh, the way the hospitals have been over the last ten or twenty years with MRSA. I mean, that's what I ended up getting. I had MRSA, which is a methicillin resistant. Uh, uh, mess, yes. uh, yeah, anti I can't remember the whole name. Methicillin <laughs> resistant uh, Staphylococcus aureus. <laughs> Very good. Listen, if you're going to get a out uh, listen to me, Kevin. If you're going yeah, to get a goddamn staff, if, if you're going to get a goddamn disease, if you're going to get a goddamn disease, please know how to pronounce it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, well, uh, Mercer, I did, yeah. but that's what I had in my legs. That's what caused my legs to go numb. Yeah, yeah, we have. A we have a couple you know, of and it's from that. dirty hospitals, and that's what you know. The, these yeah. super bugs that are going around in these hospitals, you can't you can't clean them up, and the yeah. antibiotics don't work on them. They Ryan? just say "fuck you." I'm going. I'm moving on. Yeah, and you know some football players. Some football players have been very quiet about it. Uh, Kevin Winslow Jr. sort of mentioned it. I think uh, one of the Peyton brothers had it too. But yeah, Peyton you know brothers when they have did. Mar Barry Bonds football. had it. I was right with him. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, they, these, the football players will go in there. They get opened up. And like you're saying, MRSA is everywhere. So they get that into their system and they have that. They did a they uh, somebody got MRSA in the doctor's uh, doctor's office and they went and swabbed to see where it was. And it was everywhere on the yep. handle for the light and just yep. everything that somebody would touch. It was everywhere. You know, so we, we, we haven't heard that. anything, I think, tonight from Tony. So I want to make sure he gets in here. And I want to hear from if he if, uh, if Tony, you have anything you want to say about this? I, I mean, the only thing that scares me is that when they ask Trump today, you know, when would you, like it's on his shoulders to open the economy. He, I hope he doesn't make it about himself again and not let the professionals. Uh, uh, you really think that's it. possible? <laughs> See, on. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that the great danger to this nation is himself. is we have a president who cares <laughs> more cares more about getting reelected than he does about solving the problem. And <laughs> and and that's it, the best laugh I've had, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> because he always, he always has to have it like he, he has to be the star. He has yeah. to well, be it's all the about star. him. It's all about him. You know. And I Everybody's understand. Everybody's got to praise him for five minutes before they can give you any information. The Chinese created this virus so he wouldn't get reelected. You realize that, don't you? you? Know, he he said today that this is going to be one of the toughest decisions that he's ever had to make or ever will make. Uh, I think he's taking it very seriously. Well, finally, yeah. it's about what goddamn time. time. You know, yeah. if he I, if I he in fact is, uh, if he uh, takes longer, that's better. Uh, 
Yes. Um, um, our good friend uh, uh, Josh, any, any comment here at all about any of this? I mean, I just, I think it'll mostly just be politicized, you know, by the Trump administration the way that we've been seeing it. I mean, I think he'll push to open things up. And, you know, at this point, I don't know how soon it'll be or if it'll be a good idea when he does it or not. I mean, we'll see. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not going to be completely up to him anyway. It really is up to the states. They have much more policing power within their own jurisdictions than he would have, you know, at the federal government. He can't really make that decision right. for everybody. But look, it's already getting politicized, and even in the states. I mean, it got overshadowed, but it happened in here in Ohio, and it happened in Texas, and they had to undo it a few days later, but they didn't hear. And like I said, you know, I have to go to work every day, and all these other people, you know, do this, don't do that, and, and they're not enforcing any of these essential business rules. But I'll tell you the one thing they are enforcing here in the state of Ohio with the police, the one thing that you can't do here right now is you, you can't get an abortion. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like the two fucking abortion clinics in the state of Ohio apparently are, you know, so risky. Same in Texas. That, yeah, you Same know, I mean, Texas. you know, that that's... I kind of supported our governor, even though he's not a member of my party, yeah. doing a you know, good enough job with it and everything. And then a few days into this, when, when, he, when he came out with that, it's like, yep, okay, you did exactly what I thought you would do, which was just when I thought you might be a Republican with a little bit of humanity, you had to go and remind me that, you know, hmm. I was stupid for even starting to think that. Uh, Bree's got his hand up, and we're getting towards the end uh, here. And then Charlie, make, Josh, make it brief, Bree. Rem reminded me of this. Uh, how is Calif California going to be a new nation state? Uh, it's possible <laughs> states could start yeah. breaking off. Why, why pay federal taxes? Why yeah. contribute to the feder federal yeah. system at all? Yeah, California you have no support. Make a great nation state. A great well, country. that might be one of the outcomes of this. Charlie, new York, too. Charlie, Charlie Wallace. They should start. Yeah. Fire. Sorry, Charlie. Uh, I, I, it reminded me that uh, what do you thought, guys think about what Mike Pence said about how if, 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 if CNN won't cover the whole two hour uh, Trump love fest oh, yeah. every day, and they're not going to let the people go, his people go on CNN to tell the world what's happening. Oh, to give him information. He didn't give a fuck about whether people get the information they need. <clears throat> They've got to they got to kiss his ring, or else they don't get the information, and people are going to die because they can't find. Well, they, out they don't go on CNN. Going. They don't go on CNN anyway. No, they don't. You know, you know what's going to happen, Alex? Jim Acosta is going to throw a shoe at him soon. <laughs> I can't wait. I got to see. Wait for it. Trump yeah. called Jim Acosta nice well, guy. Well, that day, so it comes right off. Don't even. That's just it. how he woke up this morning, Phil. Tomorrow he'll curse him out. They He's say they say that the White House. He he, he wakes up every you. every morning He's worried so about the, about the election. He's that the it's a, it's his main concern. He he, and he's being told by his people that he's handling this all wrong, and that it may hurt him come uh, come election time. His numbers. Oh, I mean, well, his I mean, numbers. His numbers. His, 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 numbers his, numbers his, his who knows? Who knows what those numbers? Are. You're well, the one who said, "Oh, numbers aren't accurate." Now, what happened to that, Phil? Well, his his numbers happen to be. Well, oh, now right when right they're now, up, they're okay. accurate. When they're up, they're accurate. But when they're not up, they're inaccurate. <laughs> You know, you can you can parse it any way you uh, want. No, I'm that's, parsing it the way you say it, Phil. Reported. That's what's being reported. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll see how long that lasts. I mean, yeah. You know, I'll say one thing about Brian's place of business. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he sent a picture of uh, of signage that showed where you could stand, and they and the and the sign said remain six feet apart. But I counted the tiles because they're twelve inches each. So I counted the tiles between each sign, and they were 12 feet apart. So, no, that, well, all the better. Hey, listen, we got to go here, and we got to go. Uh, I want to. I, I, I got to thank everybody. Let me see, Rob and uh, Charlie and uh, um, 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 uh, Josh and Phil and Debris just disappear. Yeah, he just disappeared. Where is he? Oh well. He yes, Brian. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Because yeah, you thanks brought to Phil. Help you, me get in. Come, okay. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure, Great. Brian. Great. Thanks. And thank I'll you to Phil for getting you here. Um, <laughs> because you know what you're talking about. 
uh, 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 Tony, thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Kevin. And, of course, thanks to Jeff. Thanks to all of you. Why don't you give a big wave goodbye? And I will give a big wave goodbye as well for the week. Thank you. Been a great show. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett, and that's it for tonight. Uh, that's all she wrote. Uh, and uh, thanks to all the people who are part of our citizen panel, and thanks to you for listening. Uh, next is um, Jack Bishop. He's got a program called The Intersection. He wants you to call him two or three or four. Anyway, call him, will you? And uh, we'll see you again next, uh, let's see here. Oh, next Tuesday, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.